In this video, I will show you how to make this exact simulation in Blender using the Flip Fluids add-on. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing X to delete the default cube. And then we can press Shift A and add an icosphere. And then let's go into the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons to make it smoother. So let's add it to uh, three subdivisions. Then we can apply the modifier. Then go to object and add smooth shading as well. Okay, and then next we can duplicate it. So press Shift D to duplicate it. And then we can duplicate it a, a few times. Like this. And then we can save before we continue. So uh, just give it a name and you can save it wherever you want on the computer. And then press enter to save. And then press I to keyframe the location. And then do it for all of them. And then we're going to add some noise to the objects. So let's go into the graph editor. And then let's start off with the X location for these objects. Go into the modifiers and add a noise modifier. Set the scale to around 50. And then let's set the strength to around 2. You can of course add different values if you want to. And then we need to copy the modifier and add it to the rest of the objects and the different axes as well. So uh, let's select the Y location and then paste it in. And then we need to use the face value to add some variation to the noise so that they all become different. So let's set the face value to 100 for uh, this one. And then let's go to the set location, paste it in, and set the face value to 200. And then we can go to the next object, make sure to uh, paste it in to all axes, and then we can add some different face values. So let's set this one to uh, 300, and then 400, and then 500, and then we do the same for the rest of the spheres. And then after a few minutes of uh, copy pasting the modifier to the rest of the objects, you can now see that the noise animation works. So let's save before we continue. File, save as, create another file, and then we can continue. And then next we're going to hide this window. So just uh, drag it to the right. And then we need to uh, press N, go into the flip fluid settings if you have the add-on, and then select all of these spheres. And then we're going to turn all of these spheres into obstacles, like this. And when we go into the physics settings for the obstacle, we're going to increase the friction. So let's set the friction to one for all of these objects. And by increasing the friction of the obstacles, they will be able to hold up the uh, slimy fluid for a bit longer, which looks better in the animation. And then next we can add a cube, and then press S to scale, and this is going to be the domain, which is the border of the simulation. And then let's add the flip fluid settings, turn it into a domain. You can press S, then set, to scale the domain on the Z axis. And then we can go into the domain settings. And to increase the uh, quality of the simulation, we can increase the resolution. So let's set it to 150, for example. This will, of course, mean that the baking time will be longer the higher you set it. And then we also need to enable viscosity. And for now, I'm just going to set the base value to zero. And then we can set up the uh, setting later to make it a bit more slimy. The next, I'm going to save. So press Control Shift S to create a uh, new save. Click on the plus sign and then save. And then we can press Shift A and uh, add the fluid. So add a cube. And then press S, then Shift Set to scale it only on the X and Y axis. And then press S, then Set to scale it on the Z axis. Then press G, then Set to grab it on the Z axis. 
and then S, then set once again to scale it on the Z axis. And then next, we need to uh, add a bunch of cubes to add some holes to the uh, fluid. So uh, let's press number seven for top view, and I press shift A and add a cube. And then you can press number one or number three for front view or side view, and press G to grab and S to scale. Okay. And then next, we need to add an array modifier to uh, add a bunch of these. So uh, let's add an array modifier. And then I'm going to set the count to uh, 16, both for the X and Y axis. Just going to increase the factor slightly. And I press S to scale it down. And then uh, you can press Shift D to duplicate the uh, array modifier. And then I'm going to set a negative value on the Y axis. So minus 1.3. And then we can scale the uh, cubes on the Z axis. So that you can see more clearly what we're going to do. So we're going to cut the holes through the uh, object. So uh, before we can do that, we need to apply the array modifiers. So uh, go to apply. And you can also press Control A to apply. And then hold in shift and select the fluid object. And in order to add the holes, we then need to enable an add on. So go to preferences, add ons, and then search for the bool tool and enable it. And then under edit on the right side, we can click difference so that we uh, get the holes from the uh, arrayed cubes. Okay, and then next, we can scale it a bit on the Z axis. And I'm also going to create a new save. And I press Control A to apply the modifier. And I press Tab and A to select all. And then Control B for bevel. So something like this, so that the object looks a bit smoother. And then we can add some smooth shading as well. And then next, we need to add the fluid physics to this object. So let's set it to fluid. And then we can select the domain once again and set up the viscosity settings. And because we want this object to be sort of slimy, I'm going to set the viscosity value very high. So let's set the base to 100. You can even set it to 200 or 300 if you want the uh, fluid to be even harder. And we can set the end frame to uh, 300 for now. Or 500. Sort of depends on how long you want the uh, bake to last and the animation to last. And then we can set the resolution to 200. If you have a very slow computer, you should probably set it to 150. And um, because I want the bake to be fairly short, I'm going to set the end frame to 350. Okay, and then you can bake the uh, simulation. And after a few hours of baking, we have the simulation. And as you can see, it works just fine. So the next step will be to set up the lighting and the materials as well as the render settings. And uh, this is what it looks like when the viscosity is set to 100. And in the final animation at the beginning of the tutorial, the viscosity was set to 200. And then we can press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to set the camera to the current point of view. And then we can go down to view, set the camera to view, so that the camera follows your point of view. And then I'm going to set the render engine to cycles because that looks much better, even though the rendering time is a bit longer. You can also use the CPU if you don't have a GPU. And then let's make the background transparent. 
the resolution will be 2160 squared. And in order to improve the lighting of the scene, we're going to add a background image. So go to world settings, add an environment texture, open, and you can find free HDRIs in the description. I'm going to use the uh, Chelsea Stairs HDRI. You can of course add any HDRI, it doesn't really matter, just whatever looks good to you. And then we're going to select the light and then turn it into a sun. So let's set the strength to five and then press R twice to rotate the sun freely. As you can see, we now have some basic lighting. Let's save one more time. And then we can select the fluid. And then we can add a material. You can of course add whatever material you want to. We can add a glass material. Or you can add a glossy material. Which I think looks a bit better. And then we can add a material for the different icospheres as well. So I'm just going to give them a basic glossy shader. And then copy the same material to the rest of the icospheres so that you can edit them all at the same time. And then next, we can animate the uh, camera. So uh, let's select the uh, camera and then press I and I to keyframe the location and rotation. And then here I'm going to go a bit closer with the camera and then I and I to keyframe. And if you want to do some uh, small changes to the colors and materials, this is the time to do it because next we're going to go to the output settings and I'm going to select a folder for the final animation. So just create a new folder for all of these uh, PNG images and then give the animation a name. And then after you have done some final changes to the scene, we can go up to render and then render animation and that's it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it and subscribe for more blender content